true gossip, where gossip meets truth. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Season 1, Episode 9 of True Gossip, where gossip meets truth. Tonight, we have a few special guests along with our returning panelists. Tajuddin Shabazz, a man who brings his wisdom and knowledge. John Kinlaw, our Southern free thinker. Myself, Tanya Kowloon, your host and founder. And of course, my co-host, Ramel Royal, the man who works like a poet. And together, we are First Cousins. Well, welcome to another exciting show of True Gossip, where everybody's opinion is their truth. Nobody's wrong, nobody's right here. Hopefully we can learn from each other. Today we got a, a returning special guest, and we got a new special guest to the, to the panel. First, uh, our cousin, Bishop, real pleasure, he's returning. How are you today, sir? I'm blessed. Good, good. And we have, for the very first time, we have Shannon, the educator. Welcome to the show. How are you? Good to be here. Thank you for the invite. My pleasure, my pleasure. So listen, we're going to get right to it. Uh, this is a very interesting topic, and, and it's kind of near to my heart because, you know, in the recent events, there's been a lot going on in the Black community. Uh, the protesting, uh, possibly uh, a vice president may be appointed to run on a Democratic uh, ticket as a Black woman for the very first time. So the future of the Black community, where are we headed with the future of the Black community? And realistically, how do we improve the safety of the Black family and how families can be accepted how black families can be accepted equally. I want to start with Bishop right now. So Bishop, tell us, how do we improve the safety of the black family? Start to patrol in our own communities. It's time for us to not rely on others to do that for us. We have to learn to police our own communities. When we see things that are out of order as a community, we need to address what we see. Not say, oh, well, I'm not going to snitch. I'm not going to do that. Because that's why our communities are dilapidating in this day and time. So in order for us to reinforce getting back to whom we should be respected as, we got to start respecting ourselves. Black lives won't matter until it matters to us. Mm. Mm. And when it starts to mattering to us, then it will become a priority that we will start to police our communities <laughs> like the Nation of Islam does. You know, I take my hat off to the Nation of Islam because one thing about them, they're not going to allow you to come to their community and invalidate anything that's going on there. They're going to make sure that you respect the cause that they have. And until we do that, we are going to always have a challenge against us. If we don't realize our lives matter, who does or who right. will? Right, right. Uh, we're going to go to Shannon, the educator. Your thoughts on how do we improve the safety of the Black family? or a black community? Well, I appreciate it. And you know, it's a, it's a question that I think that, uh, uh, that, that has to be addressed, addressed in a lot of different ways. But being in education, I'm always about enlightenment. And I think that more information that you can give the individual and get a black family uh, or tools that you can tool them with to use, that's going to be the start of it. Um, I, work with a, I work with a lot of young men and I, I, I teach law and leadership to them. Many of these are juvenile delinquents. They're doing rehabilitation, and they've come from all ilks and walks of life. But the first thing I do is I teach them, you know, the first amendment and how to address their grievances with the government. I teach them the first ten, you know, I teach them the bill of rights out the gate. I want them to understand. I don't teach them street law. I you you've got to broaden their perspective because they've got to work in the global world. And just giving them enough to get out the hood is not enough. You've got to enlighten them to situations that they're going to see and, and their walk if, and their journey. So I think, you know, that knowledge has got to be key to it. And I think that's going to be that's a great equalizer. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when Common Core came out and everybody was fussing about it and, they, and no one could tell you why they were upset with it. And, and some people, 
on the forum right now might not believe in common core, but what it really was doing was if they're teaching an algebra in Mississippi, it's the same algebra they're teaching in Boston and Seattle and in San Francisco. So when our young when our young people go out into the world, at least the, the starting block is going to be even where they've all at least had the opportunity at the knowledge to gain. Take a stigma that comes with it, and that's and that's a really deep question and, and to unpack. But I think those are that's that's a really good start. Mm, okay, uh, we're gonna go to Tanya. Tanya, your thoughts on how we can improve the safety of the black community? The first thing I'm gonna say is that you have to know your rights. Know your rights. Understand what your rights are, and um, not just educate yourself. Educate your family on that, because even though the law um, may not seem that it pertains to you, but if you know your rights, they're not going to be able to trick you. So this way, when something comes up, you'll be able to, um, you know, say your rights and understand it and be able to exercise that right. And then not only that, just like the educator said, he was talking about educating our youth. You know, when, when that question came up, of course, you know, I really thought about it and I said, learn your history. Learn your black history. Because the history in school that they teach you, um, is not the history that we really need to know. So, and I'm going to say learn anti-history. Whatever they're teaching you in school, really research it and find it because most of the time what they're teaching you is not the truth anyway. So know your history, know your black history, understand who you are as a person and teach that to your community because it takes a village to raise um, the family and the black community. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, go to... Uh... Kinlaw, our Southern free thinker. Give me your thoughts on that. You know, um, my thoughts on this is that when I, when I think of, when you think of protector, provider, things of that nature, you speak of manhood. Um, the protectors have been removed from the black communities by these mass incarcerations that has taken place for the past several decades, if not since forever. So when you remove the men from those communities, there is no protection there. And then what happens is they're being held by law through these long extended probations to have one foot in jail and one foot out. So how do we rectify that? I think earlier today I was reading a story where there's a young man, young teenager, matter of fact, who's being held in an adult uh, uh, correctional facility in Mississippi for the past 511 days without being formally charged mm -hmm. because there's no state law preventing a kid from having to stay in jail for X amount of time without being charged. Practices like that it targets certain communities nationwide. When you have almost over a third of the black males that are behind bars, okay, uh, what is done has been done. But once they're released, what are their options? So I figured if we can figure out a way to where we can help these young black men who's made mistakes in life to have a second chance of doing the better things, instead of going back in rotation of, uh, of the system, then that's one of the ways where we can try to at least rebuild and re reinsert the protection that our communities need. But if the men are being taken away from the communities, then the protection will not be there. And it is left amongst the women and the mothers and stuff to try to raise young men, which they come up and they still fall by the wayside. Because there's but so much that women can do with young when raising young men or young boys. Not saying that they cannot, but there's but so much that can be done. And because that 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 male figure or those male influences have not been in these young men's life, they tend to make the wrong decisions going forward as an adult. So I think if the black communities come up with ways of, instead of becoming like, yes, we need barbers, we need beauticians, we need uh, 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 people who sell barbecue or whatever, but we need people who actually runs and operate temp services. Temp services that work with uh, ex-felons, temp services that work with um, uh, people who've done some time and things of that nature to try to help them to get their voting rights, to try to help them to get them reestablished back in the society so therefore they contribute and do the things that they want to do versus when they come out, there is no help. There is no help. So therefore they end up resorting to the things that they did to get them back behind bars. And it's, it's a repeated cycle that needs to end. Understand, understood. Tom, yes, sir. Today, your thoughts on Yeah. That? I'm going to piggyback off of everything that everybody else said, but also we need a thorough knowledge of self. 
So mm -hmm. what I'm saying is there's a scripture that says men sharpen men, women sharpen women, iron sharpens iron. So again, our role as men should be getting a thorough knowledge of who we are and then teaching the youth. Now, if there are children out there without the father in the home, it's supposed to be the uncles to take charge of his nephews to turn him into men. And the same thing as women uh, taking charge of the nieces. So again, I'm a part of the nation. Our job is we have a class called the FOI class. And in that class, that class is for men to take responsibility of who we are. And we train the men in menhood training. I'm also a principal of Mason and we train we have a group called like junior masons that's called the knights of pythagoras so we do we get those youth with fathers and and without fathers and teach them manhood training which is you know how to do this how to tie a tie it's a shame how many grown men they don't know how to tie a tie but that's what we're supposed to do is educate the young men or the men that don't know and the same thing with the sisters we have a class called the mgt class general uh, mgt gcc which is muslim girl training and general civilization class and those classes are to teach women how to be women we've been erased from our natural roles so again when you got a man that don't know who he is or you have a woman that don't know they who they are it's hard to, for them to become a good father a good mother a wife a good a uh, man and a good woman. So it goes back to what everybody's been saying. You have to know your role so that you can become that proper person in your family to to raise your children and to be a good husband and a good wife. So you know we are, we are, have a, the nation itself has a good um, track record on raising men to become good husbands, to become good fathers, to good uh, you know men period or husbands. And the same thing with wives, uh, sisters and mothers you know so again it starts at home and then it's supposed to spread out to the community and like the brother said about policing our own brother bishop said but policing our own we're successful because we understand when it, whenever you have something you have to have law because you have righteousness and unrighteousness but we are successful not only do we enforce the law but we have a love for our people and that's what differs us from the police force now if it's something where we can't contain that then we take it to the other law enforcement but we have a love for our people peace you know uh, before we go back around i like to add on to this and i gotta say quite honestly it's not much i can say because you you all have pretty much said it all and i'll just really be piggybacking off for the next person but the one thing that's near and dear to me is teaching you know when I look ahead I see a blackboard when I walk I walk into a classroom and anybody that I confront or come across they could be possible students or pupils I say that to say this that we're all teachers and if we're not looking to teach at all times then really we're not doing our duty which is to be a servant right so I, I bring this up because our family since mid-March has been conducting three times a day a family Zoom conference prayer line. And we have a family member that's there religiously. But you know what? He doesn't have the the average nine to five job. He 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 basically makes ends meet how he can make it done. But you know what? We constantly being in his ear, we constantly showing. A, a, a good figure, uh -huh. uh, a, a positive figure. And I'm pleased to announce he got himself a nine to five job making $15 an hour. Yep. And guess what? He's I'll 43 years old. So my thing is, is this, is that we all have a platform and we need to teach and reach. And you know, I'm gonna piggyback off of what you said, Tajin, Tajin, I'm sorry. And that's piggybacking off of Bishop about policing you know we need to police our area but in all kind of ways i'm a big advocate of not using the n-word it it, it 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 bothers me it irks me and to me that's another form of policing ourselves because to me using the n-word and addressing us with the n-word holds us back because it allows others to use the n-word and it's still a word that brings you down 
And to me, like, like Bishop said, black lives matter, but it will never matter until it matters among us. And if we can't replace the N word with king and the B word with queen and the H word with princesses, we're never gonna be able to move forward and bring some safety into our community because as Shannon, an educator said, there's so many ways you can answer this and so many areas that you can go into that makes up the safety and the security of the black community. When's the last time a neighbor told you about your child was doing this? When we was coming up, our neighbor could spank us. And guess what? When we got home, we didn't get a spanking for what we did. We got a spanking because our neighbor had to spank us. Mm. So where is, it, it has to come in so many different levels. I'm, I'm gonna move on. Tanya, would you like to add on to this as we go back around? Yeah, I'm just gonna say um, the other thing is um, get involved in your community. You know, know who your congressman is, your councilman person is, know who at the district, uh, you know, in your, in, in, in your community. And get involved. Get involved in the boys and um, the boys and girls club. Get involved in being a mentor. Get involved in going to the school and seeing what's happening at the school. And just like you said, policing, policing ourselves. Just like you said, we um see the young men walking down the street and they got their pants hanging down. You know, say something to them. Allow you know, let them know why is disrespectful and how other people are perceiving them. So I'm with all you guys piggybacking off of that. But my thing is get involved in your community, know what's happening in your community. And um, if you even got to come up with something to bring the community together and you have an idea, take it to your community and, you know, and, and do that. So my thing is be involved in the community and um, be an advocate in your community. Shannon, an educator, would you like to add anything? Going back around. Oh, I, uh, thank you, man. Uh, we were talking about self, uh, someone spoke about self-worth and definitely about self-policing. Uh, and I kind of spoke about the, about the stigma that's attached. There's a lot of, there's a lot of hyperbolized stigmas that we, that we carry in the African-American community that hold us back. That has been just been, it's just propaganda that's been put out there and where, where we, we act and in a de facto and segregate ourselves by de facto way quicker than anyone could 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 put could put on us, and that comes from lack of knowledge and not willing to accept the change. Um, one thing I know, you know, a lot of people they get frustrated. I've been educated twenty six years, and they get frustrated about their their setback because I can hold a. A, a career fair at the school. I'm not really holding that career fair. I'm holding it for, for the young people, but I'm also holding it for the parents. I can't tell you how many times that I've had to work through the child to get to the parents to uplift my community. I'm not, I'm having that community fair for those parents and teaching them how to do their how to resumes. And when they're coming in, they where kids have a chance to come to a PTO meeting and bring their parents and get credit so they can have special access to functions. I wanted that because I wanted their parents not to be ashamed of their setback. That setback should be started at comeback. But the stigma from, uh, you know, don't be 5-0 and, and, you know, doing an exercise of, you know, what, what's a good job and, 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 and how to make good money. And those that are in the power to be that are, that are, that are, that are uh, for lack of a better word, just glamorizing the status quo and mediocrity. They, they've gotten there and all they can do is continue to talk about the problem but never really offer up a solution or take, right. take the advice like we said try to get better mm -hmm. mm. ken law a southern free thinker i mean it, it goes back to uh i think what we touched on in previous weeks it really takes a collective effort um from everyone from the the man on the street all the way to the the celebrities and the entertainers that we listen to every day because like it or not these celebrities and entertainers have more of an influence on our youth than some of our, us as parents or even as your uncle or big bros and things of that nature it sometimes baffles me that you know we have certain 
entertainers that come out of advocate advocate against violence are you know want to you know kind of be activists in some nature but they done made a career on making music about glorifying certain things and which is going to be a major influence of some of the youth that we deal with and we've all been young before and things of nature but i think now it's become just completely blatant of what it is the agenda is in their music now so uh, i think it goes back to as i was speaking of some of these ex-felons quote unquote ogs uh you know they can speak on these experiences and share that but they can also show that hey this is how i bounce back you don't have to do that way you know but until they can actually show that they're able to bounce back they won't be able to advocate on what a second chance really is because they back behind the wall before they before they know it you know um so it's just going back to everyone spoke about self-policing well we all know like Tasha Deem and I, we both talk about how the cops got this quote unquote thing called the blue code. Well, there's right. this whole thing about the street code and mm -hmm. the, the snitching and things of that nature. So yes, policing ourselves is great, but then we're going to spend half of that time within within the internal conflict amongst each other because you have the ones that want things to be right and then you have the others that don't want things to change. And then we know, we see stories of repercussions taking place against other people who try to do things within their community and for whatever reason, they are silenced because of their cause. So mm. it, it takes a collective group effort from, from everyone in order for this whole protection thing to work. Mm. Todd, today, anything else you'd yes, like sir. to add on? Yes, sir. Hey, um, Shannon, your mic is muted for starters. <laughs> I saw that. Um, but anyway, those of us that belong to organizations, we need to come from out of these damn buildings. You know, we in the buildings, church here, church masters, masters. Let's go to the to the hood. If we believe in God or whatever name, you got that fear removed from you. So our people need us. I, you may not be the bishop, but if it's a deacon with a strong heart, he got to step up because he is a leader. So we go there right to where the problem is and we address that because our people are dying out here and they need our leadership. Yes. So if you... Don't even think that you're a leader. It's in you because, again, whether you follow Jesus, Muhammad, Moses, or whoever, he they were leaders. So you have to embody that leadership that they have and go out there because all of them went to the poor. They went to the despised and the rejected, and that's where our work is. Those that are sitting in there, you worship a worship a master in the lodge. Be the damn worshipful master out in the street. You know, get out there to Pookie and Man Man and them and address them. You know, you didn't raise Hiram from the dead. Let's go get Pookie and raise him from a dead horizontal to a living perpendicular. That's where the true work is. So again, whether you male, female, you know, you got to be that leader that we say. Instead of being, again, on true gossip, those of us that are on here with that, the knowledge and wisdom and understanding that we have, let's go out and get this despised and rejected, the, the stone that the builders rejected, the lost sheep, and put our, our words into action. Peace. Mm. Now, let me tell hey, you, Bishop, that, man, that's good stuff right there, bro. Yes, yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. Bishop, before you close us out, you had used the word earlier, and then Kinlaw just repeated that word, and that word is snitching. And <laughs> I want to take it to another area before you close this out. The NBA just had their restart and they're in a bubble. And in this bubble, you cannot leave this bubble. You are restricted from leaving this ground because they don't want anybody to come in contact or increase their chances of being in contact with COVID-19. So you cannot leave this bubble whatsoever. And if you want to know the truth, it might be the safest place in America right now because their last two tests of, excuse me, over 300 people, nobody has tested positive. But with that said, they have a hotline. So if the bishop wanted to leave out, to sneak out because he wanted to go get some hot wings or Kinlo wanted to go run the subway to get a hero, you can call up this hotline and tell Hey, Bishop is walking out. Now, some people refer to snitching. I bring up snitching because I feel like it ain't snitching. It's being responsible. There and, it is. And, and, and that's the thing. 
sometimes we can make something sound bad when really in all reality it's good. And I don't always think snitching should be looked upon as something bad. being bad because it's actually someone being responsible. So I just wanted to uh, get that in. But Bishop, close us out on this area. Wow. Wow. This is an amazing topic. One of the things that we have to realize and recognize as a people is that we either are part of the solution or are part of the problem. And in order to be a part of the solution, you have to implement everything you have that can edify the body, edify the people, that we're able to, to um, acknowledge when we're wrong, when we do wrong. We're able to acknowledge when they do right. We have a tendency to always badger our young African-American, Black American men by their pants hanging down. But if they know better, they'll do better. And even when they know better, sometimes they just won't do better because they find themselves in a bubble of, I can't. They have our, the mentality that the, the millennial children have today, either they know everything or they know nothing. There's no like, I know a little bit, I could learn more. Either they know everything or they know nothing. And this is the way they're being treated. Mindful that you have great grandmothers that's 55, 60. My sister's a great grandmother, she's 60 years old. She had a son at 15, who's a grandfather at 45. Okay? So I say that to say that in our learning, the scripture says, get wisdom, get knowledge, get wisdom, but in all that, get and get understanding. You got to understand, as Tajajin Taj, Taj said, you got to understand who you are and what your right. purpose is. Until you know your purpose, you are going to always hit a stumble block that's not going to allow you to be able to reflect the God you serve, whomever he, whomever he may be. Because it's not about us or individuals, because that's why... Lucifer got cast out of heaven because he thought that I was the I am. But he's not the I am. And we have to learn that in order for us to get where we have to go, we can't condemn nor can we condone. We can't keep tearing people up. I have an acronym at the church I use called BOW. Build others up, not down. And every time I preach, I always say church folk are dangerous. Become a Christian. Church folk will tear you down. Christians should be building you up. And if, any, if you're in any kind of religiosity or religion, or cultural beliefs that you have, it should always be something to build people up, not tear them down. But I'm saying, closing that, I think that you came out with a positive impact, and I'm gonna preach that the B, the B and H. Don't always call me B, call me Queen. Don't call me, don't call me and call me King. Don't call me H, call me Princess. Don't call me Thug, call me Young Ambassador. Because until we start calling them names that gives respect. They're going to keep not having respect for themselves. Roger that. So, I wouldn't just say that, you know, point being, either you're part of the solution or you're the problem, one or the other. And you have to choose which one you are today. And if you're a part of the problem, then you need to, to reevaluate your lifestyle that it can line up with what you're trying to say. And if you want to be a role model, the first thing you do, because real men fight, you know how they do on their knees and they pray. That's how we fight. That's how we fight. Jeez. Okay, okay, okay. Listen, we want to welcome uh, Maria Benson to the show. Uh, she got on a little bit late. We can see her there. Uh, it looks like she has a little bit of difficulty with her audio, but I think it's on right now. You're currently muted. You have to unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. You have to unmute yeah, yourself. Unmute yourself. There, there you go. go. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, welcome, welcome to the show, Maria. Uh, for those who don't know, she was one of the uh, lucky contestants on the True Gossip Contest. Uh, she is like one of our, our biggest supporters, followers. Yeah. She's constantly commenting. She's constantly posting. And, yeah. and quite frankly, she's educated me on some of the things that She's uh, posted for uh, on on the um, page, and uh, we went to school together back in the days, and we long, grew up in the same neighborhoods. So we're longtime yeah. friends, 
So welcome to the show. And Thank you. Um, we ain't gonna let you off easy. For coming in late, you're gonna start <laughs> the next topic. Uh, uh, no problem. So, no so problem. we're gonna focus on with you, you know, how do we get the black family or the black community or the black person to be viewed or accepted or simply treated equally? What steps can we take? Well, um, mm. That's a hard topic, but um, the only way that I see that it's going to work is that people, I'll say OGs, the ones that was in, you know, that, that, that was in the community that's still there, that we grew up with, that people respect. If they don't get involved, because they're still, you know, they, they still have a lot of, you know, say so to a lot of you know, kids that and, and young men that live out there. And I think if they was to step up, I think the younger um, generation would step up. You know, it, it's funny you say that because I look at Black Lives Matters, right? Mm -hmm. And by far, it is an aggressive group. Yes. And, and, and I think in the long run, we're going to see some change from their efforts. But it's an yeah. aggressive group. And then I look at the NAACP. I don't. Re I don't ever recall seeing them that aggressive. Okay, but to me, I think for Black Lives Matter to really make a difference, to your point, I think the NAACP needs to reach them and and meet with them and kind of show them a little. Show them how they did it years ago so that it can be respectable. Because I don't think the Black Lives Matter movement is appears in the eyes of many as being respectable as the NAACP was once upon a time ago. So I think there should be some kind of connection between the two and not be distanced. And, I, and, I, and that's what I get from what you're saying with the OGs. You know, they're always going to be respected in the neighborhood. Yeah. And, and a lot of times the young people coming up, they look up to them. And sometimes it's for the wrong reasons. But if the OGs have learned and they can pass on some wisdom, it's going to be well received by the <coughs> youngsters. Because, again, they usually look up to them in the community. Uh, Kimo, the Southern Free Thinker, what do you think? What can we do? What steps can we take? so that we can be looked upon and treated upon equally? Um, you know, it, for me, it, it will start with a lot of these reality shows that exploits a lot of the stereotypes amongst the Black community. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, it's ignorance amongst a lot of people that, that, that is the reason why people have these false perceptions of us. Unfortunately, a lot of people get their information from the TV, you know? Uh, they look at these different portrayals of characters on movie screens or on these videos or on these reality shows, and they say, see, this is what happens. This is how they are. You know, even with the Black Lives Movement that you that you speak of, they'll take certain entities within those protests and put a micro, you know, put, put, it, put it, magnify that, and they paint a big picture of this is what the whole movement is about when there's only just a handful of those individuals within a larger group of people that are, that are, that are causing uh, bad press for the movement. Yeah, so, exactly. you know, unfortunately, I am not a big fan of these reality housewives and, you mm -hmm. know, uh, Chicago Aints and all this other stuff, mm -hmm. uh, basketball housewives where uh, <laughs> every, every two, three seconds, love and hip hop, all that stuff. You know, they throw in drinks and bricks and everything else so they could get their hands on at each other. It's entertainment, but it's reality to what most people will, will perceive of us. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, unfortunately, if someone says, Hey, it was a it was a big black man with a bald head, they don't know if it was Shannon the educator or if it was Michael Jordan or the real corporate right. with who was a big yeah. black guy. And, and, you know, even myself, you know, it, it, it was Sometimes they'll say he was a tall black man. I'm a tall black guy. But unfortunately, you have a large group of people that just look at it that way. Mm -hmm. They can't determine a kid 
who is a fourth year uh, a, 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 a senior student at a university mm-hmm. versus a, a kid who's, you know, a high school dropout who's really in that street life because every one of us like to wear and share the same styles and things of that nature, you know? So, again, I think it comes where if we want, as you just pointed out, not using the N-word, not using the B-words, not using certain things and intertones mm-hmm. to address each other, stuff like that, until mm-hmm. we sharpen our own images, yeah. that's the only way we can be looked upon uh, uh, equally amongst the others, uh, other people outside of the African-American community. Bishop. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Um, I think it's important to get trying to talk. I think all these organizations, Black Lives Matter, NAACP, um, 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 the um, the um, Shockton, Black Panthers, the Black Caucus in Washington. You know, I think that we have to come together as one body. Again, me being a bishop, of course, I'm. I I look at scripture when I see things. It says that we're many members but one body. And every part of the body is important. The eye is no good without the head. The tongue is no good without the mouth. The arm is no good without the body. And we can go on with that. But I think that until we're able to look at who we are again, as Brother Tajdeen said, and know our respectable place for who we are, and know whose we are, bad English, and I know y'all probably said he, this guy here, he has a lot of degrees and he's still talking to me. But who, if you don't know who you are, you can't know whose you are. And once you know whose you are, then you know who you are, and then you'll know your ability. I know that I'm Valerie Pledge's son, and I know that my mother would expect me to do the right thing. And as long as I know that, it will give me the inspiration to do the right thing. But until I know what the right thing is, I'm going to continue to do the wrong thing. And because our communities are in flux with so much negative energy, so much gang banging, and and y'all talking about the shows, I can't stand those reality shows. I think that it makes makes us look like we're dumb, asinine. Ignorant. The word that's popularly used for us, it displays that in many of ways. And until we start giving a display, a display of kings and queens that we are, we are going to always be looking at as looked at as peasants. Mm-hmm. So you have to rightfully know your place <laughs> in your community so that you can deliver a message to your community that can be effective and efficient for the community. Mm-hmm. We're well, you know, uh, Tony, can you add on to that? Yeah, I'm going to add on to that, and I'm going to get right to the point right here. Until white people start respecting us and talking to us with respect, we're not going to be looked at. We're going to always be the lower class because it had to start with them because they put us in this situation in the first place. They yeah. took us from where we was, where we come from, and let me finish. Let me finish my thought. We can respect ourselves all we want in the community. I can, I respect all you guys on here, but uh, we uh, when we go around to community because of the color of our skin, we're not respected at all. They look at us as lower class. They look at us as um they bunch us all together. We're not educated. You know, we bums. We we drug addicts. We this and we that. Let me finish. Until the white people start to respect us, and and how they're gonna do that? They have to start teaching their children. They have, to, they have to be trained up in their own first and get yeah. that and get that out of their mind that because of the color of our skin that we are not we are not treated equally. Until then, we, I respect all of y'all. I respect yeah. you guys in the community. I respect you as a bishop. I respect you as a teacher. I respect him as a father, uh, a brother. You know, I respect myself. I respect Maria for coming on and um, you know, whatever she do. We respect ourselves among ourselves, but until those that did us wrong come and apologize to us and say what they did was wrong, everybody else will look at it that way, and then we'll get more respect in that way. We can do all that TV shows and all of that don't make a difference. White people go on TV shows and do the same asinine stuff. 
But they get respect and are treated equally. Yeah. We do the same thing. We're not we're not um getting respected and being treated equally because the people that oppress us respect us and don't treat us equally. Wow. And until and until then, and until that happens, we need to have people that's going into the school that's that that'll catch them, that'll catch our kids at an early age that will teach them how to deal with what they're going to have to deal with when they're growing up. Well, we as a people have to, we as a people have to learn to respect ourselves before anybody respects us. We're not going to get respect. If we, if we call each other the N word, they're going to call it anyway. If we run around here, yo, I got that. They're going to not have no respect for us. We have to, again, I bring it back to, we have to learn to respect ourselves, or we're never going to be, 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 be respected for those on the outside. You know, I thought the same thing, Bishop. That that you know, we got to stop calling ourselves that. We got to stop um, calling each other bees and ends and all that. But like I said, just like we have to train our children up away so they can respect themselves, so when they go out, they can have self-respect. But until those people teach their children. To respect us, no matter what color our skin is, then you'll start seeing some other respect. I, I, you know what? Let me get to Shannon, the educator, and I'm going to get back to your thought, Tanya, because you said a mouthful and a handful. And um, Shannon, the educator, I want to ask you something because you've been an educator for 26 years, I believe you said. Yeah. And one of my concerns with my daughters going to college was... You know, I, I, I wouldn't mind them going to Spelman or somewhere like that, you know. But in the back of my head, I was always concerned would they diploma be treated equally like the University of Georgia or the University of Alabama or the University of Auburn. I would love for them to go to Howard, Spelman or one of those colleges. But tell me, am I thinking too far? Or am I on track? You tell me. What do you think about that? Because that's another way of looking at us being treated equally that you have to accept our degree just like their degree. Absolutely. And come on, you hit boy, you hit something there. And I got I got an answer for you as well. Um I'm a product of HBCU, but I'm also a product of uh, a tradition of, of the University of Alabama as well as I am a product of Alabama State University, uh, and I and I had an opportunity to see it from both sides. I don't think that we ever can discount, as much as we want to, but we have to discount those programs that HBCUs. But it's what you have, it's, it's what you put into it as well. Those summer internships that they offer, I know uh, at Alabama State, they have one of the the, the largest intern and externships that you can they send you all over the world if you take advantage of them, if you make the grade to be a part of that if if you don't run home during the summertime because you want to go hang out with your boys and your girlfriend you need to stay on the grind and get all the experiences that you can get just I, and i think that, that that again is equalizer and and one of the biggest things the university of georgia has and university of alabama is well their enrollments are what, 27,000, 40,000? When our HBC enrollments are, are seven and 13, well, they have a broader uh, network of, of, of alumni when they get out. That's one of the bigger things out. Uh, Ohio State what, has 100,000 people on campus. Central Florida has 130,000 people 30, on campus and online. When you build in those kind of networks and those kind of alumni networks, that's you get to a chance to meet other people. I, you know, just you think about your classmates that, that you ain't mute, you ain't mute, sir. Sir, you mute. You muted yourself. There you Silent go. Thing, they'll hire you just because you are a graduate. I got told that went to Bama State and went to Alabama with me just because they know who I am. I'm going to be the first one that they're going to call on and choose. Uh, it's, I think, and especially where once you get there, what you, what what do you do when you get there? And, I, and it goes back to that again. 
being concerned about the Spellmans and the and the Alabama States and the Alcorns and the Jackson States. Um, depending on your program, make sure that you are marketable. Because right now, I, 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 and I raise my kids and I raise all my, and, and the young scholars I deal with every day, you know, you're just, a, you're a sum total of your great experiences and events. If you had an opportunity to get out there, you could be that outlier and what people thought, oh, he came from a little black school and he came from, it doesn't matter. It's how your hustle is. And I really try to express to them that the only real color matters is green right now. Yeah. Because where it, it 30 it. years yeah. ago, you, you might not have been able to get employed in a certain circumstance. Now these folks don't care. Um, you got, I, I see white contractors, they're going to hire a whole Hispanic crew as long as they get the job done because they can't find nobody black, white, or any other to get to, to do the job, right. do work. Right. So they're not going to mess up their bottom dollar because you're not the right cue. <laughs> because it's too, you know, the plane is, it, is too... Is, is too broad now for them to do that. They can't, you know, they, they, they can't, they're not going to miss any money because of color. Now, maybe they, they might not put you where you need to be in the infrastructure, but they're not going, they're, they're slowly starting to matriculate and get more of us involved in that of all diversity because they understand what the, that the world is bigger than, you know, than this side of their county sign. But uh, with that question, I want to speak to something else too that we, that we talked about with that, that you know, it's about, that respect and you have to act universally. I used to take young people all over this country, still do, for my students, but I would tell them, you know, when we go stay at the embassy suites, half that, and people, listen, people were totally against it. And the powers of be, and I, when I, I was a principal and, and I had, but they couldn't handle these kids. They didn't know what to do. So they finally had to hire somebody black <laughs> and they didn't like the taxes, but they saw 700% increase in the PTO. They saw a um, 400% increase in, 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 in decrease in discipline problems. But what I was doing was I was taking title. I sit down with kids and I showed them, showed them the budget. I was like, hey, listen, we got $200,000 to spend. Now I can either spend this money on enrichment or I can spend it on remediation. You're going to decide where I spend that money based on your actions. And when I was cutting checks to take them to see the Hornets play in New Orleans, once we got there, I made sure the Chamber of Commerce was there. And I made sure that every everybody in the organization from the top to the bottom, where they could see not the athletes on the court, I wanted them to see them six-figure jobs that was putting those athletes on the court. Mm -hmm. That's what we have to do. You give them those experiences, and that brings them up. And, and again, acting universally, what sister, uh, sister was talking about, white people, you know, they got to respect us first. Well, how many times... It, even me, I'm talking about dealing with white people, black or other. It's just a certain way that you can't come to me in a certain look you can't have, or I'm going to be cautious in a lot. I'm going, I'm not going, I'm going to, I'm going to reserve judgment and leave that to God and Jesus. But I'm going to be cautious about how I do business with you if you're showing yourself openly in a way, in that acceptable manner. Because as big and as black as I've been my whole life, I can I can matriculate in a lot of areas other people can't because I know how I know how to uh, to carry myself. Mm. And, uh, like can I, I say something on that, Shannon? You know, I hear what you're saying, and you can be articulate, you know how to handle yourself, but that doesn't mean they respect you, and right, they're gonna treat listen, you equally. Listen. They might not respect you. Well, you know what? I'm not looking for you to uh, always about the respect, but at least I'm trying to get to treat equally, or at least. Like I said earlier, when they can't handle us and they can't, they, they have to have some people, they have to have somebody to handle the gate. That's right. L listen, what is evil fights its hardest before it dies? There are so many things that are about to die away and we're seeing this in this movement, like someone talked about. You're absolutely right. I don't care, you know, what? because you know, I do business with people every day. I know they don't like me, but I guess what? That does not change the zeros on that check. Understandable on that one, you know. Green is the only thing that's equally in this country. Let's let's give Taj a deal. Well, let me share this one thing real quick before we go. Okay. Like I said, when I take these young people, I'll take these young people places. I would tell them, I said, I want you ready for breakfast at six thirty, dressed. Don't come down here slide and with the popcorn bags on your hair, and in pajamas. I want you dressed and ready to talk to people and meet people and greet people. Uh huh. So. When they, 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 you, I want you to be the the outlier to what they think young African American kids look like. So now I'm in a hotel, 
with with 65 young people, African Americans. Ain't nobody nobody's cussing, nobody's caring. Everybody's being polite. They're speaking, and people are coming up and like, "What is happening? Where did you find these children?" I raised them. I but you know, them. right there, where did you find these children? What happened? You know, I'm just gonna leave that right there. Go ahead, Shabazz. Hey, uh, Maria is um. Mute, uh, her mic is muted. That's fine. For real. Okay. Uh, I got two uh, two answers for that. First of all, for us to be equal, I don't care which, if you go to a HBCU or a university, you have to have a knowledge before you go there of who you are, what you are, what your people are. And also, when we go to these universities, these universities are designed for us to go there to get a degree to go work for somebody else. Let's go to these universities with the mindset of creating a job so that we can do it on our own yeah. instead of going to work for somebody else. Second yeah. of all, to make us equally and respected amongst everybody, and some people may say, I'm trying to get female fans. This isn't what I'm trying to do. For us to be treated equally, we have to respect and protect our black women. Thank when we you. do that, other people will respect us. Because that fool that went down with Breonna Taylor, yeah. If, if we have addressed that properly, nobody, even another black man, is going to put his hands on a sister. And once we do that, because every other nationality out there respects and protects their women, except for us. And I'm talking to the, the brothers and the others. Once yeah. we do that, then we got a foundation That's to so. build on. Peace. That's and so. before we go and pay some bills, I just want to chime in real quick. Is this... You know, I think we've all seen this in a supermarket where a black child is sitting in a car and a white child is sitting in a car and they're passing by. And for about maybe three seconds, they're playing with one another, making faces, waving at each other, doing some sort of acknowledgement. And for three seconds, they're friends. But you're gonna have that one parent that turns around and instead of making that a teaching moment, it's going to pull the child away. Yeah. And it's usually the Caucasian parent. And what happens there is, to what Tanya was saying, mm -hmm. until they respect us and, and, and start using moments like that to teach, to say, right. this is okay to say, say hi to with this little black child, or it's okay. So to Tanya's point, She's on to something, but I do believe, like you said, Tajadine, and even what the bishop said, and maybe all of you said it, we do have to come to the table with a level of respect for one another so yeah. others can respect us. But yes, when man. there's a teachable moment, they should be able to teach their child the right way. You know, and that's why the, I George, said Floyd, the yeah. George Floyd, eight minutes and 46 seconds, I can't breathe. Uh, knee in the neck was the first time I seen so many white people out on protesters because yeah. they saw it and 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 they realized it and and right there for this that's a teachable moment it, it was a lesson taught white people cared for whatever reason they cared at this moment at and moment. I think that when they have an opportunity they do need to teach their children with that oh, we're gonna take a few minutes to go pay some bills. Okay. Gossip will return after this commercial. This next topic, you know, I even talked to my daughters about this, so I really want to hear what y'all have to say on this. Listen, the word reparations has been out there for black people. When is that going to happen? How is it going to happen? But more importantly, I learned from my current job that I have that when you're just selling an idea or product, representation and presentation is everything. And it's key. And I would like to know from you all, who is the person or organization or law firm best to represent us and present to the government why we should have reparations. Who should that be? I'm gonna go with uh, Kim on this. 
you know what I mean? Start us off with this camera. Um, I don't, I talked about this earlier. I just don't think, I just don't know when or if that will ever happen. It already uh, I, I mean, as far as the, 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 the totality of what reparations is, the, the ideology of it to everyone, where everybody gets a certain portion of some type of financial reciprocation of some sort. I just don't know how that will take place or when it will take place, honestly. Um, if I had to choose a group, I mean, obviously you have enough people in political power to represent a certain um, number of people that can articulate how that can be broken down. You had black economists, you had economists in general, uh, whether it was black or white or Jewish or whatever, you had economists for, for, for the last several years speak of it as it became more of a social media thread of where, hey, listen, reparations, and this is what it will include if we were to ever do such. The problem is the people that we're presented to, the powers that be, all feel like they're not in some way responsible to grant such. Basically what's done has been done. None of the descendants has anything to do with that. That was something that was done and everybody has died and, and it was a war that was fought and hey, the emancipation and the voters right and we've worked things through different legislations to get to where we are now. I think some people just feel the fact that we even got a job is a form of reparations. Unfortunately, I don't believe that whatsoever. So because you people have so many different views of what reparations supposed to really be for us, you know, I don't think it will ever get to a point where we get to the finalization of what it will actually be, you know, and how it will actually be beneficial to us and how they're going to distribute it as such. Um, no matter how or who is being brought to and what is being presented to it by. So I'm in the dark when it comes to that. We spoke of this for decades. Okay, okay. not a problem. Bishop, who do you think can lead this uh, effort? The nation of Islam. Mm. I'm a Christian, but I believe if we want to really, really get some respect where we are and where we live, it would take the followers of the Nation of Islam. Because one thing about the Nation of Islam that I said, and I've heard the brother FOI, Food of Islam, and MG Class Muslim Girl Training, and all those things have developed those women and men to be respected. I don't care where you go. Muslims are respected. I don't care where you go. They're not looked at as, they're not looked at as the end. They looked at as Muslim. Brothers. As brothers. You know what I'm saying? They're not look the, the the women of the nation of Israel are looked at as women, not bees, not H's. And the reason why is because they're a disciplined nation. Now, for those who don't know, before I became a Christian, I studied Islam. I had a brother who was an imam. So I know that the disciplines is what we need in order to get First of all, to get any reformation. In order for this to get any reformation, this 40 acres and a mule that they've been giving out, I ain't seen mine yet, okay? And they've been giving that out for the last 40 years. I ain't get mine yet. Where's my 40 acres and a mule? 40 acres and a mule. Well, Tanya, who do you think should represent her? I was going to say this. I know y'all probably like, this woman just radical. She just going to say... <laughs> Until we get an apology, we ain't getting no reparations. <laughs> Until they admit that they done something wrong, we ain't getting no reparations. That's all that's all I'm gonna say. And I, I, I'm gonna say one more thing. Just like they apologized to the Japanese, they, they apologized to them openly. And they gave them reparations. They even apologized to the the Native American Indians. And they gave them some type of reparation, even though it was misfunded, you know, it was misused. Yeah. But until we get an apology and it's an omission, I mean, an admission that they done something wrong, we ain't getting no reparations. And if we were to get it, I was on the same page as the bishop because the nation of Islam is a disciplined um, nation. I believe that they would be able to um, spearhead that and. Um, you know, 
give out the money properly and make sure that it's used correctly and things of that nature and um, be able to talk for us um, to, to get something. I mean, but I, you know what? Until they apologize, there ain't no reparations. That's all I'm going to say. Tajuddin, your, your thoughts, Tajuddin. Yes, sir. Uh, go ahead, Bishop. Off, before she cut me off, I didn't finish my statement, and I think that I need to finish addressing that because the question was about the reparation. I didn't even get to that part. because and I he know, called on my name, so that's why I answered. Yeah, oh. yeah, your, your, the host, my cousins just cut me off. <laughs> <laughs> well, you listen, we said we could cut in respectfully. <laughs> You can cut in respectfully. Let him have his turn. I, I, I say this, that in order for the reparations to take place, there has to be a respect for court that won't us. But because, again, we go back to the teachings, they're not teaching their children to respect. Uh, and now, that is a, is a flip side. that They're not teaching their children to respect because they told them to hang out with us. And everybody's the N word in the whole group. Doesn't matter what color you are, even though they know that the N word was a, a stimulant or a, a word that was used to identify Black American people, men and women of God. They just use it anyway. And in order for us to get reparation, and time you time is on fire again. You're right. <laughs> you gotta get some respect. But until and again, I go back to until we respect ourselves, nobody else is gonna respect us. <laughs> Exactly. Right. Jump in. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. I appreciate all the respect that everyone's given to the nation of Islam because we've been for ninety years we've been talking about reparations. So there are many different sections within years. the nation. We first gotta come together <laughs> and um <laughs> go you, and right. spearhead this. But also the people, the other black people that are out here, the black leaders, before we can even talk reparations, we got to know what to ask for. Because I think somewhere in the scriptures it says a fool and his money will soon part. That's so right. there's no sense of them, the government giving us some mon monetary funds for reparations because that'll go back to him. We got 50 million black people in America. We don't need no damn 50 million BMWs, Benzes, Lexuses, <laughs> and all that, and Teslas. So uh -oh. let's marry some funds with some land. You know, if we're going to have reparations, let's get some land because we need to raise our own food, food. We need our own banks. We need our own hospitals. So, again, if you're going to give us something, we need some land to back that. Not just money, because again, we don't need 50 million Teslas going up the <laughs> highways and stuff like that. And then it's so far fetched that when we bring up the, the topic of reparations, oh, oh, that happened so long ago. But the Jews get so much reparations for something that happened in Germany that comes from the United States. Yeah. The Japanese got reparations for what happened in World War II. Mm -hmm. When they were held in concentration camps, the Native okay. Americans, we see what happened. But when it comes to us, when we ask for it, it's like foolishness. Oh, I had nothing to do that. But you have accumulated wealth from our ancestors. So That's if right. they have a conscious bone in their body, they should, out of their own consciousness, they should do something. Because again, to me, with reparations, there really isn't any price tag that they could put on reparations. Because again, let's talk about the middle passage where 150 million You know, then let's go after we are here. You breaking up, Tajadine. I'm breaking up. After we are here. Then we call our Jill. So you can Let's give up the damn country. Let's take the whole country. This reputation's for me. <laughs> and I'm back in Europe. Peace. I asked that question. I still ain't got my 40 acres in the mule. They've been there years. I ain't get mine yet. I'm still one of the way. You know, I'm going to piggyback back off of what you said, Tajadine. When mm -hmm. I think of the Central Park Five, right? Mm -hmm. The exonerated five, I should say, right? 
These guys went to jail at a young age mm -hmm. and later was released because they were proven innocent. Right. And they were awarded $12, $15 million a piece, whatever it was. And they spent maybe up to 15 they years of, of their they life in jail, right? Mm -hmm. That's a nice chunk of change, but it ain't worth what they went through. No. That's right. So in essence, no, there isn't a dollar value you can give us. And I agree with that. Uh, we're going to go to uh, Shannon, the educator. Your thoughts. Who do you think uh, should spearhead this movement? I'm last. <laughs> you must know. I'm going to say a whole bunch of <laughs> we, We're going to need some magicians, <laughs> some car salesmen. <laughs> some Let me tell you why. The magicians are going to create the moves for them to, to, to get it offset, to get the ball moved. See, because what's going to happen? And then when you bring in the car sales, and they're going to be able to negotiate the deal. There's nobody I've seen negotiate harder than, than the car salesman on, on Friday, on a Saturday morning, when he's trying to, at the end of the month. You got to get that deal negotiated. But what these entertainers, something that's less threatening to them. Because, and, and, I, and I'm, not, I'm, make, I'm not making a lot of it, because that's what it takes all the time to get anything done to appeal to the, to the powers of be. But the biggest thing that we'll have to do is to show them how to benefit from the reparation of us. And at the same time, be able to take more of what they've, of what they've already taken from us. It's going to be a hard road to hope. But I, you know, I'm with it all. It's, it's so much before we even get to that to address. But I, I, I can be certain one thing for sure, we'll never get them until, unless they can figure out how they can, they can benefit from the reparations that they bottom up. I don't think nobody knows this, but they already granted reparations in Asheville, North Carolina. Right, right. And, I saw that. and, 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 and the reparations that they gave, it was more of a community thing. You know, it wasn't really, you know, set for an African American person. It was for the African American community. I guess to approve, I guess to improve um, their way of living. Revitalization. Yeah, you know, it, it wasn't, it's, it's not, it, it's not individually. Right. And just like my mom, she picked Kyle and she's still alive. Her and my father. So if anything, yeah, I'm, I'm set on these um, reparations, but just like Brit Pledger, like he said, um, the Nation of Islam is the most disciplined out of all of us, really. And if anything, they should be able to lead. But I don't know who came up with these reparations for Asheville. That's what I wanted to know. Like, who put the plan together? I really didn't dig into it. I heard, I'm like, what kind of reparations are those? You know, like, uh, you know, is it working? You know, I want to see the development of it before they say, okay, it, it worked here. Now that's what we're going to throw at everybody else. I don't want nothing thrown at me. I want something that I want to be able to see and be able to show my kids and my grandkids, my whatever, this is what, you know, what, what the outcome was from your grandmother and your great grandmother picking cotton, and these people are still. I'm. I'm. I still ride by. They're still out here. You know. They. They. they well, not them themselves, but their. You know, generations. Their kids are here now. Their kids have taken over the cotton fields and the rice fields. Wow. Yeah. They have. They have. You know. They. They have to do it themselves. But the fact of driving by to see that these are the people that enslaved my parents and my grandparents. And that's something that, you know, it's just reparations. You, it, they can't even, that wouldn't even satisfy me. To yeah. see that whole, to see their whole thing like demolished. You know, their whole factories and all of that. That would be my reparation. I, I, I'm tired of seeing them. I'm really tired of seeing them. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this, and uh, 
Reparations, I want it. I don't, I don't know how you exactly feel. I got an idea how you feel, but I want it. When I look at a government that can give out $3 trillion to the people, and especially mostly to businesses during yes. a pandemic crisis, they can give black families, households, or folks money. Like, like Tajuddin said, it's only 50 million of us. They put $3 trillion together overnight for the country. Can I just say something? Now, you can just imagine if a package like that was put together for households or individuals uh, for reparations, you can do it. The question is, I, and that's why I posed the question, I think it's about presentation and, and, and uh, representation. Yes, I think that uh, uh, Islam, the Nation of Islam, is a great idea because they're very disciplined and they're gonna be well respected and they're not gonna be pushed over and they're not gonna be looked at upon and say, get out of here. Don't let the doorknob hit you with a good Lord's bitch. Yeah, they're not gonna be treated like that. I, another person, and, and I, got, I, I got this from my daughters. I think Michelle Obama would be ideal because she, she brings the education aspect. She brings the, uh, uh, the maturity, the presentation. See, first of all, you want someone to listen. You want, you want the door to open. Then you want them to say, come on in. And then from there, you can make your move. But again, it has to be from a representation standpoint, and then you have to have the present in presentation. And again, reparations, I want them. I mean, Can I say something real quick? I, 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 not really. Want. Yeah, let me say this real quick. You know, when, when you when you oppose this question, right? I, you know, I had to go do a little bit of digging, you know, just to understand more about this reparation and, you know, and, and do we really want it? Is it going to make a difference? So, and I, and, and I was reading up, you know, with the Japanese, you know, they gave 80,000 people $20,000. <laughs> that ain't no money. That, 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 you know, even for them, that ain't no money. Then they, gave, they then, they, then they gave, then they gave, then they gave the Native Americans, they gave them $1.3 billion, $3 billion. And you know what they got? $1,000. A piece. The rest of it went to, they had $1,000 a piece, and it, the rest of it went to um, their community for tribal things and that or whatever. But you know what that means? It went right back to the government. Right, so, right. So, so again, you know, Again, Tanya, what I'm saying is, is this, if we can witness them give out $3 trillion and about to give out another one to $3 trillion in the next couple of weeks, they can find money for us. I and I, and, and, I, and we're not talking about billions, we're talking about trillions. No, I understand what you're saying. I, got, I, got I understand what you're saying. This. But listen, so, so let, me, let me address what, what Romel just said. This is an election year. They're giving out that money to still sway the voters. They're That's giving right. out that money to avoid strict, straight up pandemonium, okay? Mm -hmm. It's a pandemic and then there's pandemonium and <laughs> chaos and then you have a powder keg of racial issues that's going on. That yeah. money was not to benefit us because you see how they delivering, del uh, delaying on the next one. And they know people hurt, they know poor folks. Yeah, they know so the vacation. They got to happen yet. The <laughs> not yet to happen yet. There's still gonna be your foreclosures. People still got power bills that are thousands of dollars because yeah. they haven't been because people the money that is being given out is not able to take care of everything. It's just enough to kind of get you by from week to week. Some people bills fluctuate from month to month. Okay, school is about to start back. There could be possibilities that kids could be affected from this same pandemic now. So that's another type of entity that we got to address going forward. This is a bluff. This is a hey, listen, just so we won't lose control of the country. Okay. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to do that, but they knew they had to do that to, to, to prevent pandemonium. To the, to the reparation part, I'm still Haiti is still paying yeah, French, France every single year billions of dollars because of their independence that they have. But Haiti is one of the poorest countries yeah. in this part of the Western Hemisphere. Okay? Going back to the Native Americans. Yes, they, took, they got money 
But if you go to any Native American reservation right now, they are the poorest reservations yes. or locations in this country. Exactly. So that's the they accepted the deal. They thought they got the best of the deal. But if we don't go to those casinos, they don't eat. And they have yep. the highest death rate of alcoholism, heart yeah. disease, and any yep. else disease that you want to no, but they can't even get Think care the from this COVID yep. thing. They can't even get care. They're dying off and they can care less. All right. That's right. And all of their reservations controlled by the federal government. Yes. And they try to I don't even know if that's still going on, but they're trying to kick them off their land now. With the, yeah. with, with yeah. the Japanese. With the Japanese. Yeah. Granted, it wasn't no real money, but the Japanese still have their income or the, the equity that comes back from Japan because they understand group economics economics. You and I, we both work with Adrian co-workers and things of that nature, they work within themselves. So they'll take that 20 and they'll flip it amongst themselves. The same mm -hmm. thing with the uh, Asian Indian uh, ethnic groups and things of that nature. They'll take whatever benefits they get to come over here, whether it be from the education, whether it be from a startup loan or anything like that, and they'll flip that money amongst themselves, okay? Yeah. So they understand the power of group economics. Going back to the Asheville, North Carolina reparations thing, if anyone's visited Asheville, North Carolina, I'm from South Carolina, Greenville County. We're just south of I-26 of Asheville, North Carolina. There's about this many black people in Asheville, North Carolina. I've been to, I've been to Asheville. I used to live in Charlotte. Right. So, yeah, so you understand what I'm saying? Gastonia, Charlotte, yeah. So you That's understand what I'm said. saying, right? I don't know who put this together. Right. <laughs> Western, so the Western North Carolina area is straight up the Smoke Hills. There's a handful of us. If it wasn't for the colleges that are up there, then there would just be a smaller handful of us. So yes, yeah. it's easy for them to try to cater to that small portion of people. Going back to what Bishop said, it is 400 plus years of free labor that was seen. There was no dollar amount that you could right. put in That's place. What I said. <laughs> okay, no so then what is the alternative of that? Would it be credit? Would it be some type of um, uh, the way they do equity loans or mortgages, yeah. Like that. But no, they well, they I, were saying that they were saying that they weren't going to have African Americans pay taxes anymore. We we don't have we won't have to pay taxes. They, 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 they <laughs> depend on our dollar. If our dollars are not in play, if our taxes and if we're not yeah. the biggest consumers of the country, the country will shut down. So exactly. going back to what um with, with the nation of Islam, Tajudim, I think I was part on our earlier sections. I brought up Nation Islam, I'm talking about, I got mad respect for them. But I don't feel like they're going to sway the powers that be on Capitol Hill. Louis Farrakhan right. is one of the most intelligent people I've ever heard speak in my life. And he can articulate mm -hmm. eloquently everything that needs to be done. As a matter of fact, he's been doing it his whole life. He is 80 right. something years old right now. Like right. you said, they've been talking about it for 90 years. Louis Farrakhan has been talking about it for at least 50 years. Mm -hmm. Okay? And, and right. there's still and nothing ain't moved. If, Haiti has still got to pay France for their independence. I doubt that we're going to get reparations as African Americans in this country here when we're only 50 million people and there's 120 or 30 million people themselves upon that. All Unless right. they benefit something from that. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Just like with the Native Americans, anybody else. They're going to give you something of what you're going to give us. What is that going to be? I don't know. I fear the worst because you look what happened with the Native Americans. And see, mm -hmm. the problem with the Japanese versus us Japanese understand group economics. We don't. We so don't. going back to what Tyler right. Dean said, we'll take the money, and and, and they feel they, they they probably just feel like it'll be a waste because they it see what we do with our monies now. We're the biggest consumers, mm -hmm. and we're the lowest uh, 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 income by household in this nation. So they don't feel like it's valuable to give you give us give exactly. us the money. That's why I have a hard time struggling that there will ever be reparations if there will ever be. Well, listen, I can interject. One second, Bishop. Yeah, this has been a tremendous show. Unfortunately, we're coming to closing time of the show. Before we do close, Bishop, I'm gonna give you a minute to speak what you have to say, and then I have to close this out. Go ahead. Okay. I will say this. We talk about reparation. We talked about who could lead us. We have to be led by the spirit. God has to move to us. And my thing is, what is it that you profit the whole world and lose your soul? Because money, the love of money is the root of all evil. And if we're basing our reformation on money, then we've lost it. We should be basing our reformation on respect for who we are. 
Because mm. I don't care how many dollars you give me, it can't take that 400 and something years of slavery that we were enslaved. Okay. I don't care how much, how much you tell me, oh, forgive me. Let me tell you something. Don't tell me you love me. Show me you love me. And they're never going to show us they love us because they don't even love themselves. Yeah. And until well, we learn to take it, to start at home with it, we could never go abroad. And so for closing, I would say um, that in order for us to get what we have, we got to forget what we lost. Mm. Well, we're thinking that, about all these things. We've lost a lot of stuff here. We lost a lot of times. So, but if we keep focusing on what we lost, we never was. If we under our past to pick our future, we in trouble. We in trouble. I'm sorry. I'm, yeah, it's all good. It's all good. Listen. I guess we're going to give everybody a chance to put a final thought, right, Ronald? Hey, listen. We're going to do what we call rapid fire. Mm -hmm. He already did his rapid fire. <laughs> yeah. You got you got you a minute, Taja Yes, sir. Hey, yes. Um, the Nation of Islam. We can spearhead spearhead the movement for reparations, but we're gonna need the Black Caucus. We're gonna need the NAACP. We're gonna need the Kappas. We're gonna need the Deltas. We're gonna need everybody to back us. The unity. To the our unity is more powerful than an atomic bomb. So we can spare it, spearhead it because we know what to ask for. It ain't about money if you're not putting some land towards that to do that. So again, we can spearhead it because we know what to ask for, but we need all of the black groups to, to get behind us to go before that. And we're not asking for reparations. We're going to demand them. And they mm. respect that. Mm. Because nobody gets nothing from begging. Peace. <laughs> Maria, give us a minute. Give us a minute, Maria. Go ahead. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. No, what I was, I'm, I'm, I'm type agreeing with. I don't know his name. Tyler the guy Dean. that was just, yeah, that's you. <laughs> Shabazz. Yeah, oh, I was agreeing right. with him. <laughs> I was agreeing with him. But the thing is, is that I'm, I'm feeling that if we don't start like training our kids, like maybe six years ago, I was online telling people. You need your passport and you need a gun. If you don't get a passport and you don't get it, you, you're going to need a gun. And look what's going on mm -hmm. today. You need right, your right. passport. Now everybody rushing. Now you can't get nothing now. And you, <laughs> no one no one listens. I mean, if, 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 if um, closed mouths don't get fed, if you don't want to take the time and listen, You'll never get anywhere. And our community is so hard-headed that they think that they know everything, that they know nothing. They know nothing of the past, and they don't have a future. Because they're they not even trying to look at the past to build a future. Wow. That's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. Ken Law, give us a minute, Ken Law. Give us okay, a minute. Go ahead, go ahead. Just that's a minute. Hey, listen. <laughs> you got you got the competition, Bishop. <laughs> Can't um, get that rubber band now. <laughs> listen, in, in a in a in a perfect world, everybody wakes up out of bed and everybody respects each other, no matter what color, creed, or creation, right? But we're not in a perfect world, so therefore, I believe that respect is earned, not given. Um, I believe if it starts if you start to respect yourself, then certain things starts to change around you because perception is people's reality in a lot of different ways. That's why they say first time presentation matters a lot. So you got to conduct yourself in a certain way. And a lot of times, you know, you can't expect someone to respect your house if you know you ain't been cleaning the house. Uh, so you got to, it starts from within. And, you know, sometimes it's like going back to what Bishop said, it's that spirit, it's that glow. So sometimes you ain't got to tell people, they just feel it around you. It's the energy that you bring to the table. So therefore, yeah. You know, and sometimes all those things kind of come together to where now people just treat you a different way. It might be something that each one of us might do, but that each one of us might be treated differently based upon the energy and what we bring to the table and how we, mm -hmm. how we conduct ourselves. You know, I'm just going to piggyback real quick off of Maria when she said, you know, we're hard-headed. I may be one of those. I uh, may be the hard-headed one, the stubborn one. Because when I see them throw around trillions of dollars for this pandemic situation, and as Todd Jadine said, there's only 50 million of us. Even if they gave us individually $2 million, 
That's only a hundred million dollars. There's still nine hundred million dollars out there. Yeah, so yeah. to me, I agree with what Bishop said. You can't put a price on four hundred years. You know right. what? But if you got pies out there, you just throwing around and slicing it out and giving it out. Give us our slice. We deserve it. Yeah. I and I, and I, I, I think reparations <laughs> it should be mandatory. And and and, and Tajuddin, I'm with you. If, if the Nation of Islam steps up to do so, we cannot Backers. put our feet on the chair and pet the dog and drink iced tea at the poolside right. and wait for something in the mailbox or on our cash app. And we, we right. just can't, we can't wait on that. We got to stand up and support yeah. with them. So I'm going to close the show out before I hand it over to our founder. But again, this has been a riveting show, a very... Yeah, lighting show. That's right. And I think we hit some emotions. I think <laughs> I mean, people uh, spoke with their hearts. Uh, our, our founder Tanya, which is my cousin, uh, there was times where my speaker had to turn it down a little bit because she, she was like Tanya on X. club <laughs> level. She was on club level. Right, right, she, there, she, there. she was like, is this is Sunday night. Like, is this, <laughs> this is Sunday night. She was on Friday safe? night level. But but you know what? But that's that spirit. That Bishop right. was talking about. Once you right. get moved by that spirit, you know, yeah. your, your inner self come, come out and your mm. truth come out. And yeah. this is what this is true gossip. So yeah. uh, I want to thank all my guests, but I'm going to hand oh, it yeah. over to the founder. Yeah, I want to say thank you guys. You know, I just want to say my last, my, can I get my rapid fire? My rapid fire is I just want every, I think that reparations should be um, free education. Free housing. Give us, give us these things that we can have, that we can see, and that we can pass on, and that we can use for the future. And that's just some Free of the medical. things. Free medical, right? Those things. But that being yeah. said, I'm gonna close this out. I want to thank you all uh, for coming out, enjoying the show. It was a pleasure to be able to um, get together and voice our opinions. That's what this show is all about. Letting your voice be heard because your opinions matter and hear true gossip. But if you have not seen or you missed any of our episodes, you can find us on a lot of platforms now. So don't forget to subscribe, like, share, listen, and follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Spotify, iTunes, Anchor, and any other platform that you listen to your favorite shows on. Good night, and remember, true gossip is where gossip meets truth. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. <laughs> Is it safe? Yeah, <laughs> I'm on mute. Before we get on to our next topic, uh, uh, I, I must say, uh, this has been fantastic. Oh, yeah. The energy is riveting. You know what? It's been you know what, God Bell? I just noticed. You know why I'm late? Because I'm an hour behind you guys. Oh, I see. Mm. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm sippy, and I'm, it's 8 o'clock. It's just 8 o'clock now. Okay, I got you. I got you. That's my fault. My, my fault. Yeah. But, we're uh, part of Mississippi. Say, uh, we got we got a great group here. Uh, many of us are saying the same things, but we just word it differently, and I'm learning from you guys, and I'm really enjoying this. But uh, this.